Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Factors and Multiples, Day 1. This is a two-day lesson, so today you will be able to find the greatest common factor. In Lesson 2, you will learn how to find the least common multiple. So greatest common factor. You can use common factors or prime factors to find the greatest common factor. We abbreviate greatest common factor as GCF. To find the GCF, what I like to start with are factor trees. Let's start with 12. Think to yourself, what can I multiply together to get me 12? There are sometimes more than one answer to these questions. I would choose 3 times 4 to get me 12. Now 3 is a prime number, so that branch is done. 4, however, can be broken down into the factors of 2 times 2. So our prime factors for 12 are 2, 2, and 3. Now we do the same for 18. 18 is 6 times 3. 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3. And the other branch of 3 is a prime number. 2 and 3 are also prime numbers. So my prime factorization is 2, 3, 3. To find the greatest common factor, look at your two lists and circle what's in common. I have one, two that's in common, so I will write it once. And I also have a three that's in common, and I will write that once. Nothing else is in common. What we do with these numbers is we multiply them to find our greatest common factor. Two times three is six. Therefore, the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is 6. Letter B, find the greatest common factor of 15 and 66. 15 can be broken down into 3 times 5, which are both prime numbers. 66, 11 times 6 to 66. 11 is a prime number. 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3. So the prime numbers are 2, 3, and 11. To find the greatest common factor, you circle what's in common. I have a 3 in common. I write it down once. And that looks like it. So 3 is our GCF. Letter C. Find the GCF of 20 and 60. 20 can be broken down into 4 times 5. 4 is 2 times 2, which are prime numbers. And 5 is also a prime number, so our prime factorization is 2, 2, 5. Now 60. 60 can be broken down into 6 times 10. 6 is the same as 2 times 3, which are prime numbers. 10 is the same as 2 times 5, which are also prime numbers. Our prime factorization is 2, 2, 3, 5. Now let's see what's in common. I have a 2 in common. I'll write it once. I have another 2 in common, so I can write it again. And I also have a 5 that's in common. And nothing else. Multiply the three numbers. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So the GCF is 20. Letter D. 
find the GCF of 32 and 48. 32 can be broken down into 4 times 8. 4 is the same as 2 times 2, which are prime numbers. 8 is 4 times 2. Although 2 is a prime number, 4 can be broken down again into 2 and 2. So we actually have 5 2's as our prime factorization. Forty-eight is the same as eight times six. Eight can be broken down into four times two. Two is a prime number, but four can be broken down into two times two as well. Six can be broken down into two times three, which are prime numbers. So here it looks like we have four twos and a three. One, two, three, four, and a three. We have one two in common, another two in common, a third two in common, a fourth two in common, and that's it. Multiply them together. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So the GCF is 16. Letter E. There are one slice servings of three types of cake on a table. Each row has an equal number of servings and only one type of cake. What is the greatest number of servings in each row? So this time we have three numbers. Let's do our factor trees for all three numbers. 10 can be broken down into 2 times 5, and that's for the marble cake. For the red velvet cake, we have 15, which can be broken down into 3 times 5. And the chocolate cake, which is 20, can be broken down into 10 and 2. And 10 can be broken down into 2 and 5. So our prime factorization is 2, 2, 5. When you're finding the GCF of three numbers, you have to find numbers that are in common to all three. It looks like all three of them have a 5 and nothing else. So the greatest number of servings in each row is five servings. Letter F. Lena earned $49 on Friday, $42 on Saturday, and $21 on Sunday selling bracelets. She sold each bracelet for the same amount. What is the most she could have charged for each bracelet? So we have 49, which can be broken down into 7 times 7. 42, which is 7 times 6. And 6 can be broken down into 2 and 3. And 21, which is 7 times 3. And I'll write the prime factors out here. So what do you see in common with all three amounts? It looks like they all have a 7. Do you see anything else that's in all three? These two numbers have the number 3, but this number doesn't, so we can't use 3 which means seven dollars is the GCF. Letter G. A gardener has 27 pansies and 36 daisies. He plants an equal number of each type of flower in each row. 
What is the greatest possible number of pansies in each row? So we have two numbers here, 27 and 36. 27 is the same as 3 times 9, 3 being a prime number. 9 can be broken down into 3 times 3, which leaves our prime factorization as 3 times 3 times 3. 36 is the same as 6 times 6, and each 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3. The prime factorization is 2, 2, 3, 3. It looks like I have a 3 in common, as well as a second 3 in common, which means our GCF is 9, and we are talking about pansies. Letter H. 14 boys and 21 girls will be equally divided into groups. Find the greatest number of groups that can be created if no one is left out. We have 14 and 21. 14 can be broken down into 2 times 7, which are both prime numbers. 21 can be broken down into 3 times 7, which are also both prime numbers. It looks like only one number is in common, which is 7, which means 7 is the GCF, and it wants to know the greatest number of groups, so our answer to this problem is 7 groups.